Hello students and welcome to the third video in section 2.1. In this part, what we're going to be doing is practicing using that difference quotient to find f prime of x, that derivative of several different functions. Let's get started. So here is my first function, f of x is 2 thirds x plus 3. So I want to find the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, so we're going to have f of x plus h, so it's going to be 2 thirds x plus h plus 3 minus 2 thirds x plus 3, all over h. So then I'll continue that going, the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, I'll distribute the 2 thirds, so 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds h plus 3 minus 2 thirds x minus 3 all over h. Well what nicely happens is 2 thirds x subtracts out with 2 thirds x and negative 3 and positive 3 also subtract out. So let's write what I have, the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 thirds h over h and those h's divide out so let's write what I have, the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 thirds. Well, that's just going to get me equal to 2 thirds. But let's say what we found. We found f prime of x. So f prime of x equals 2 thirds. You don't want to forget that last part. You're not just finding 2 thirds. You're finding the derivative, f prime. Let's start our second problem. So this one looks a little bit meatier. So now I have the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 half x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h plus 3 minus, um, let's see, I'll write this as 1 half x squared minus 2x plus 3, all in parentheses, all over h. So now the limit as h approaches 0. Um, all right, I'm going to expand the x plus h and distribute the 1 half. So I'll have 1 half x squared plus xh plus 1 half h squared minus 2x minus 2h plus 3 minus 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 3 all over h. So let's look at what's going to cancel out. I have negative 3 and positive 3. I have 2x and negative 2x. And I have negative 1 half x squared and positive 1 half x squared. So what I'm going to do now is I notice that h is in common with all of the terms in my numerator. So I'm going to factor that out. So the limit as h approaches 0 of h times uh, let's see, I'll have x plus 1 half h minus 2 all over h. Those h's are going to divide out. And let's see what I've got now. Um, can I make my, I'll make my substitution in this next step. So let's rewrite this. The limit as h approaches 0 of x plus 1 half h minus 2. That's going to get me x plus 1 half times 0 minus 2, which is x minus 2. So what did I find? Well, I found f prime of x is equal to x minus 2. So now I want you to look at these two uh, derivatives. f prime of x is 2 thirds and f prime of x is equal to x minus 2. And I want you to think about how are they different from the original functions that we were given? There's one thing that I want you to pay attention to, is that f prime of x for f of x equal to 2 thirds x plus 3 is a constant function. But f prime of x for our second f of x equal to 1 half x squared minus 2x plus 3 was a linear function. 
So what I can say is that it appears that the degree of f prime of x is one less than the degree of f of x. So now I have two more derivatives and two more tangent lines that I want to find. I want to find the equation of those tangent lines. So let's get started on those. After I get these done, then we're going to look at how you can actually check your answers using a graphing calculator. So in my first one I had the limit as h approaches zero of the square root of x plus h plus two minus the square root of x plus two all over h. So when I have these, I'm gonna to wanna to multiply by that conjugate. So multiply by square root of x plus h plus two plus the square root of x plus two all over square root of x plus h plus two plus the square root of x plus two. All right, so I multiply those out and I'll get the limit as h approaches zero of x plus h plus two uh, minus x minus two, because you distribute that negative over h times square root of x plus h plus two plus the square root of x plus two. Well, what happens is the negative x and the positive x cancel out and the two negative two cancel out. So what do I have now? I have the limit as h approaches zero of h on h times the square root of x plus h plus two plus the square root of x plus two. Well, those h's divide out now. And so now I have the limit as h approaches zero of one on the square root x plus h plus two plus the square root of x plus two. So now what I'll do is I'll substitute in my zero. So this is going to be equal to one over the square root of x plus zero plus two plus the square root of x plus two. And uh, so then that zero is not gonna matter. So I'll have one over the square root of x plus two plus the square root of x plus two. And what I notice is that I have two of these x plus twos. All right, so since I have two of those, I'll have one over two times the square root of x plus two. Don't forget, what did we find? Well, we found f prime of x, that derivative came out to be one over two square root of x plus two. So that's why we worked on all of those limits before so we can work on finding these derivatives now. All right, let's look at our second one. So I'm gonna find the limit as h approaches zero of three over x plus h plus two minus three over x plus two all over h. All right, it's gonna look like a good puzzle. So what I'll do is I'll multiply the first one times x plus two and my second one times x plus h plus two. All right, and I'll distribute it as I go. So the limit as h approaches zero of three x plus six over um, x plus two times x plus h plus two. So now we'll have the same denominator. Minus, I'll distribute that three, so three x plus three h plus six over the same denominator, x plus two, x plus h plus two, all over h. All right, and so um, let's see, I can, I can uh, distribute and cancel some things out. So what I'm noticing is that I had the 3x, but then I distribute the negative, so I have a negative 3x over here. And then I have a six minus a six over here. So let's see what I have left. So the limit as h approaches zero, 
Well, that's going to be a negative 3h, so let's keep that in mind. So negative 3h over x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. And um, what I have here is I have h over 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this times the reciprocal 1 over h. So when I'm dividing by a fraction, you just flip and multiply. And what's nice about doing that is that the h's are going to divide out, and I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 3 over x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. All right, so then what happens with that is that, well, I'll substitute in the 0 now. So I'll get this as negative 3 over x plus 2 times x plus 0 plus 2. And so I have x plus 2 times x plus 2 because that 0 is not going to matter. And so kind of like our last problem here is that I end up with two of these. So I had two of the square roots in this problem. And so in that problem, I'm, in the one I'm currently working on, I'll have two x plus 2s. So this is going to be negative 3 over x plus 2 squared. And again, what did we find? Well, we found f prime of x equal to negative 3 over x plus 2 squared. So now I'm going to use the derivatives that I just found to find the equation of the tangent lines, and then we're going to check them graphically. So in my first one, what I want to find is uh, our point of tangency. So we're finding it at 7. So what is f of 7 equal to? Well, that's going to be the square root of 7 plus 2, which is the square root of 9. So I get y equal to 3. So my point of tangency is going to be 7, my x value, comma y, which is 3. Now I want to find the slope of tangency, or the slope of the tangent line. So let's find f prime of 7. And so with that equation that we found above, that's going to get us 1 over 2 times the square root of 7 plus 2. So that's going to be 1 over 2 times 3, which is 1 over 6. And so that's going to be my slope of the tangent line right there. So now let's write out our equation. Well, we're going to get y minus 3 equal to my slope, 1 6, times um, x minus my x value, which is 7. And um, we could uh, write this in slope intercept form. So I'll get y minus 3 equals x over 6 minus 7 over 6. And I add 3 to both sides. So y minus, whoops, so y equals x over 6. And so uh, 3 with a denominator of 6 is going to be 18 over 6. I'm adding 18 to 7 or to negative 7 and I'm going to get plus 11 over 6. And you can write this as x plus 11 over 6 or the way I've written it or like 1 6 times x plus 11 over 6. Any of those would be perfectly fine. So now I want to find the equation of the tangent line to our graph of our second problem. All right, so let's find f of 1, and I'm going to get 3 over 1 plus 2, uh, which is 3 over 3, which gets me 1. So my point of tangency is going to be equal to 1 comma 1. All right, that's nice. And then um, let's find our f prime of 1. All right, so I'm going to get uh, using that equation from above negative 3 over 1 plus 2 squared. So it's going to be negative 3 over 3 squared, which is 9, so I get negative 1 third. And that's going to be our slope of the tangent line. So then um, what I can do is use our point slope form. So y minus the y value of the point of the tangent line, which is 1, equals m, so negative 1 third times x minus 1. 
And if we wanted to, we could leave it like this, but let's take it a step further just in case. And we'll go y minus one equals negative one third x plus one third. And I wanna add one to the other side. So I'll get y equals negative one third x uh, plus four thirds. And again, you could even combine that into one fraction, uh, y equals negative x plus four um, over three. You could do something like that. Um, but now what I wanna do is I wanna take our equations, our original equation f of x, the slope of the tangent line that we found, like an example, x plus six plus 11 over six, and I wanna see if they work out. To check it, what I'll do is I'll go to Desmos and I'm gonna graph my first equation. My first equation was the square root of x plus two. And we are finding the point of tangency over across the way, whoops, over at seven. All right, so the tangent line is gonna be that line that skids across. So let's see how we did x over six plus 11 over six. You can see at seven that the graph is just going straight across. It's a perfect tangent line. So what we can notice is that at seven, we have found the equation of the tangent line there. Now we wanna do it for our second equation. So our second equation was three over x plus two. And what was our equation? Well, we wanted to find this equation, the tangent line at one. So I'm gonna put in the equation we found, which was y equals negative one third x plus four thirds. And again, we found a perfect tangent line. This is how you can check your results without going straight to an answer key. Um, you always want to be comfortable checking your results because if it's not matching up, if you got something that's going through things or um, just like not even close to the point of tangency, then you know we've got a mistake somewhere and you can go back and you can check your work before bringing a question to me. But of course, if you do have questions, if, you're, if you are confused, um, please just reach out. You know I'm always here to help y'all. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this is Mr. Hernandez Teaches.